When it comes to DNA, obviously when I looked at my DNA process, I was in a very different place than I am now. And therefore a lot of my sort of processes back then with transformation would have been more um, from a systematic way because I was systematic in a sense. I wanted to deal with stuff in a systematic way. Therefore, I would do things in order and I would go through these things in order. And eventually I would get to the point where, you know, that had been worked out. But now I think my experience now is that I would do it more relationally in that as I walk my journey out as a living sacrifice, then I am surrendered to the Father's desire to cleanse me, restore me, make me whole, spirit, soul, body, including my DNA and, in, and it bringing all the strands of DNA that he intends me to have, which are figurative of uh, being formed and made in his image. Um, so I would have not against doing it in a systematic way but for me relational way is always going to be more aligned to journey rather than event um, so certainly when it comes to that what you're doing in terms of uh, communion fellowship that way you know releasing the life of god into your dna for its cleansing for its restoration um, you know, I certainly had memories of things that were from the past that gave me some insight into things which may have been triggers in my DNA uh, genetically from previous or epigenetically from previous generations in that way. But I wouldn't now focus on dealing with my past generations as much as developing and learning to know who I am from the mirror of God's face and intimacy. And then when I have a revelation of who he thinks I am, the vast sum of his thoughts about me, and that is somewhat challenged to what I thought about myself, then that's when that would tip me to go and deal with something of why do I not agree with God? Why does my image of myself disagree with God's image about me? That would be a trigger of dealing with that issue. Um, and that might be something which is genetic or epigenetic in its origin. I think what you're doing in terms of releasing love on people is, is absolutely what I think God intends us to do. Love one another as I've loved you. You know, love because I first love you. And I definitely feel that that is what the world needs. It needs a revelation of unconditional love. It needs to be loved. And it needs to have love as, as the major motivating force for everything we do, um, which is awesome. Um, in, in sort of our own DNA, I feel the more we behold, the more we become like that which we behold. So I would not look into the, my DNA in a sense of I'm trying to find the negative, but I would look into what the true essence of my dna is within the face of god within the father's face within that sense of my relationship with him to then show me errors which are not like his so i'm not going to go looking and digging for the negative i'm going to see the positive and see where that positive isn't actually outworking my life and then the life of god in communion the life of jesus in communion the body and blood of jesus in communion is going to bring the life which is going to bring the reality of who I really am, which will bring about the change and transformation in my DNA necessary because I'm in agreement with it. I agree with who I really am. So let's say here's the image that may be formed by my life, my upbringing, my genetic past, my ancestors or whatever else. And here's the image of who God says I am. And I'm going to look at this. And when I see this, this is going to show me here where this isn't in alignment. And then I'm going to agree with who I am, which will bring change to that. And the taking on the power and love and energy of God and the life of God, the love of God is going to be the force which brings about the change. I can't change myself. I just have to agree with who I am from God's perspective. And that will bring about the transformation. So rather than looking at the problem, I'm going to focus on looking at the reality of the truth the truth will change what isn't true you know because it isn't true even though it might be a fact 
it isn't true from the truth perspective of who god sees me as i am the righteousness of god in christ that's who he sees me so if this life is not righteous by focusing on the righteousness of god in christ who i am my identity it will bring about me to align until i'm one till there's no difference between who god sees i am and who i actually am in reality which is a process it's a relational process and is one which i am finding works better when i am just engaging the father's heart and the father's heart is bringing that and he's never going to say to me you're wrong this isn't who you are what he does is reveal who i am from his perspective which enables me to see oh that isn't the right way of thinking that isn't the right attitude that isn't the right behavior that actually isn't the right belief system from there rather than i'm going to go searching for all the negatives and then try and get rid of them the positives will replace the negative when i agree with the positive and reject the negative that's how i see it now uh, in that process and now i live in communion because i am now in communion with the father constantly i don't take communion in a way that i used to take it but i am constantly having a flow of the life of god living water energizing my whole being body soul spirit dna and every part of me which is the energy and the life and the love of god at work in my life and, and i think that's how god wants us to embrace his life by being in a state of communion intimacy face to face heart to heart um dwelling and abiding and resting in that place of intimacy which will bring about the transformation of our lives as we just come into agreement with it if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much